Hey Team Bio, welcome to your screencast on ecological succession. Okay, I think the easiest way to explain succession is to describe the process rather than define it uh, first. So, ecological succession begins with some sort of disturbance. The disturbance could be a storm, it could be, oops, it could be fire, it could be a flood, it could be a drought, it could be human activity, and that disturbance is going to lead to um, an altering of the biological community Um, which changes the availability of resources. And those resources could be biotic resources or abiotic. Um, so let me give you a more specific example. If you have a big storm which blows down a bunch of trees, this alters the biological community. Now we've changed the availability of that biotic resource, the tree, but we've also changed the avail availability of an abiotic resource, which is sunlight, um, and the access to that sunlight on the forest floor. So potentially species that depend on those trees are uh, not so happy, those trees are not so happy, um, not that trees have feelings, um, but maybe they do. I don't know. Um, but the seed bank, the seeds that are stored in the forest floor, now have new access to light and maybe will start to germinate. So what I want to get across to you is that for every disturbance, there are going to be positives and negatives for every species in the community. Um, okay. So this disturbance, which changes the availability of resources, is going to lead to predictable change. And that predictable change is succession. Okay, we're going to talk about two different types of succession, primary succession and secondary succession. The big difference between primary and secondary succession is either the presence or absence of soil at the beginning of the succession process. So primary succession, we start from bare rock. We start with a lifeless place. And maybe that's not quite true. Um, this bare rock could be covered in chemi autotrophic bacteria. These bacteria are autotrophic, meaning they're building their own bodies, but not through photosynthesis. Instead, through the breakdown of chemicals like iron and manganese, oxidizing these elements um, and using that oxidation process to power their own bodies. So our bare rock might be covered by chemiotrophic bacteria, um, but nothing else uh, initially. Okay, uh, why would we find this situation? Well, after a lava flow that cools into rock post-volcano or maybe rubble um, from a re retreating glacier are two instances where we might see something like this. Okay, the first colonizers of this bare rock post chemiotrophic bacteria are going to be lichens and mosses. They are going to grow from windblown spores, and they are going to do the first photosynthesis in this area. Um, they're going to help develop the, sto the soil as these rocks break down and as early colonizers die and begin to decompose. So when there's sufficient soil, then we're going to start to see small annual plants and lichens in this area. 
Um, you can see here that the depth of the soil is increasing over time. Um, and these seeds are going to blow in from the wind or maybe carried in by animals in like either attached to the backs of animals, uh, as in burrs, um, or they could be carried in uh, by animal poops. Um, and eventually we're going to reach this climax community, but I'm going to talk about this intermediate and climax community more when we talk about secondary succession in just a second. Um, but know that this process can take hundreds of years to thousands of years. Um, but if we are seeing uh, the climax community being a temperate broadleaf forest, then we know that the steps along the way are going to happen predictably. Um, and we'll talk about more, a little bit more about the different, uh, the different pioneer and intermediate species that we will see on our way to our climax community. Okay, secondary succession. As I said before, secondary succession the difference between secondary succession and primary succession is the presence of the soil at the outset. So here we have a disturbance, which is a fire. Um, but this could be a flood. This could be, this disturbance could be human caused. Humans could have cut down the climax community, the forest that was here before, and turned this into farmland. And then eventually the farmland is, if it's abandoned, might return to this climax community. Um, it could be the presence of a beaver dam um, is going to cause a predictable succession. Um, the type of succession that you're going to see is going to depend on the biome that you're in. So we are going to examine the succession process for a temperate broadleaf forest, but it's going to look different if you're in a chaparral or if you're in the desert or if you're in a coniferous forest. Um, okay, so in a temperate broadleaf forest, we have the disturbance, which is a fire. And at zero years, we have not a huge amount um, of uh, primary productivity going on, even though maybe we still have a pretty healthy soil community. Um, so year zero, not a lot of primary productivity. Year one, our selected species thrive. So here we have a place where resources are like light and access to water and nutrients in the soil. Um, there's not a lot of competition for these things. So species that can have a really high R do super well. So crabgrass and ragweed, which are both examples of annual plants, um, would do really well in this type of situation. And, uh, Interspecific competition, so competition between species is not a huge factor here. It's not really a factor at all because there's a lot of space and not a lot of competition. Um, okay, so three to four years in, we're going to see a shift um, from annuals, so plants that regrow every year um, that sprout from new seeds, um, to perennials and grasses. Uh, so a perennial is a plant that is going to sprout again from its root system um, or it's going to regrow leaves uh, on a, a body that is already, you know, above the ground. Um, okay, so the one to two year view of the place looks different, really different three to four years out. Okay. In the next five to 150 years, we're going to see a big change in the composition of plants that we see here. Initially, we will often see a pine forest sprout. So pines are softwood trees and they're fast growing. So between 10 to 15 years, we would see a young, oops, U-N-G, young pine forest. However, after 10 to 15 years, when our, when our young pines have reached um, a significant height and now they're shading out the understory, we actually see a shift in our understory from 
um, softwoods to hardwoods. Uh, young pines are need a lot of light. They don't do well in the understory. So the seedlings of these trees are actually going to be shaded by their parents. Um, and they won't, they won't do well. Um, and more shade tolerant uh, trees like oaks and maples begin to replace the pines in the understory. And then as these pines die, um, you know, between 50 and 100 to 150 years, um, now they're going to be replaced by hardwoods. Um, so, uh, because the hardwoods are the only uh, little seedlings that can grow shaded in the pine forest. Um, okay, so finally we reach, we reach the climax community, the community that will stay in place until there is another disturbance. Um, the climax, the final climax community is going to be very dependent on um, local abiotic factors. So local factors like temperature or precipitation, P-I-T-A-T-I-O-N, um, the soil and the topography, T O P O. Um, so, for example, if you have a mountain, the north side of the mountain and the south side of the mountain might have very different looking climax communities due to the availability of light um, and the temperature uh, on the north versus south slope. Um, okay, and I guess uh, keep in mind that as the uh, plant communities change, the animal communities are going to change as well. So we're going to see very different um, animals in this area uh, one to two years out of the disturbance compared to, you know, 150 years plus out from this disturbance. Um, and then I guess just once again to re reiterate, we're examining here sec secondary succession in a temperate broadleaf forest, but if this were a chaparral, then our succession process would look different, and our climax community at the end would be a different mixture of organisms. Okay, that is all for your screencast on ecological succession. The last thing I want to talk about is the biome poster presentations that are going to take place uh, on Wednesday. So here is an example of what the sign-up sheet looks like in um, period 5-6. I want you all to sign up for four different sessions um, for homework tonight, along with watching the screencast, which you just completed. Congratulations. Uh, okay, so for example, you need to sign up for a session one, a session two, a session three, and a session four. If you sign up for Hannah's presentation in session one, this means you cannot go to Alex's, Maya's, or Owen's presentation because they're all presenting on the tropical rainforest and you can only go to one tropical rainforest presentation. So if you sign up for Hannah's uh, presentation session one, your choices for session two are Jackie, Clancy, and Penelope. Um, and if you sign up for Jackie's presentation session two, then in session three, you have to choose between Reese and Claire. Um, okay, I hope that makes sense. So you should sign up for no more than one blue poster presentation. Uh, good luck. I hope that this works out. I will see you all in class on Wednesday.